Bonjour à tous, nous nous retrouvons à Rome à l'occasion du consistoire convoqué par le pape François, l'occasion pour nous de faire mieux connaissance avec certains des cardinaux et nous avons la grande joie de nous entretenir aujourd'hui avec le cardinal Okpaleke. Bonjour Éminence. Bonjour mon ami. Merci de nous accueillir ce moment. Éminence, pour ceux qui ne vous connaissent pas, vous êtes né en 1963, vous avez donc 59 ans. Vous avez été ordonné prêtre en 1992 et puis nommé évêque par le pape Benoît XVI dans le diocèse d'Aïra. Mais là, le diocèse refuse votre venue pour des raisons ethniques. La chose va durer plusieurs années au point que le pape François s'en mêle et demande aux prêtres de ce diocèse de prêter obéissance. Mais la situation reste bloquée et pour le bien de l'Église, pour le bien aussi de l'âme des prêtres, et pour votre propre bien, vous décidez de démissionner en 2018. En 2020, le pape François crée un nouveau diocèse dont il vous nomme évêque. Ce diocèse découle au Bia, environ 1 million d'habitants, dont 60% de catholiques. Et le 29 mai dernier, le pape François vous nomme dans la liste des nouveaux cardinaux. Alors nous allons aujourd'hui faire mieux connaissance avec vous. Est-ce que vous avez été surpris d'entendre votre nom dans cette liste de cardinaux Yes, my nomination gave me the shock of my life. I was so surprised. It was unbelievable for me, unimaginable. But with time, I've come to accept the situation that I have been made a cardinal in the Catholic Church. Pourquoi étiez-vous aussi surpris Yes, because I never expected it. I was doing my work first as a priest, then as a bishop, and I never dreamt of being a cardinal in the church. Of course, I don't know the reasons for nomination of cardinals, so uh, it never crossed my imagination. So when it came, it came as a surprise. On peut penser que, euh, en plus de vos qualités personnelles, une partie du choix du pape est aussi la volonté d'envoyer un message contre le tribalisme. Well, I cannot read the mind of the pope. And uh, I believe, as a Catholic, I believe that uh, wherever the wind blows, wherever the Spirit moves, I follow. So only the Pope and the Holy Spirit and God, the triune God, know the reason. I do not know. On va parler évidemment de l'actualité de votre pays et de votre Église, mais la question du tribalisme est une question qui remonte beaucoup dans les enquêtes synodales à travers toute l'Afrique. Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire de cela Well, I think uh, restricting tribalism or differences to Africa may not be completely correct because I know such feelings and uh, sentiments about other people exist throughout the world, even there in France, even in the United States. So it's all over every place. And our human shortcomings in Africa, yes, is there, is a reality. But I beg to differ with you that it is peculiar with Africa. I think it is not. Pour mieux faire connaissance avec l'Église qui est la vôtre, pouvez-vous d'abord nous parler de votre diocèse Comment le caractériser Oui, vous avez dit que le diocèse catholique de l'Ecolobia a été créé le 5 mars 2020. C'est un diocèse très jeune avec plus de 246 priests incardinated, avec plus de 55 senior seminarians et minor seminarians et beaucoup d'actifs hommes et femmes who are Catholics. So it's a very young and vibrant diocese. There, with the creation of the diocese, everybody is now ready to come closer and closer to God, which is one of the purposes of creating dioceses so that the ministers of the gospel will go to the different parts, like Pope Francis will always emphasize, the nooks and crannies of the society, evangelize the people even at the grassroots level. So with the creation of the diocese, we now embrace grassroots evangelization, crossing our, across all the segments of the diocese, the children, the youths, men and women, priests, consecrated men and women. So right now, I've taken some time to visit and to meet with different groups on the 13th of August precisely, shortly before coming here. I had a full day with all the children of the diocese coming from different parts of the diocese parishes under the title of PMS, Pontifical Mission Societies. So they gathered, we celebrated mass. After the mass, we had some cultural displays. And most importantly, 
I took time to listen to them. Well, sometimes we plan, we make policies for people, especially children, without getting the input from them. So I took time to listen to them, to tell me what they expect from this church and how they appreciate this church, what they expect from their parents, what they expect from me as a bishop, now as a cardinal. That was their last encounter. I had similar encounters with the men, the women, the youths, catechists, and different groups. So that's how we are trying to see that the church is active in the new diocese. Une église qui écoute, c'est précisément une église synodale, la démarche dans laquelle le pape François veut engager l'église tout entière. To the glory of God, we were already on this path before the Holy Father talks, began to talk more about this synodality of the church. And when the proclamation came from the Holy Father, we were so delighted, we were so thankful to God that the same Holy Spirit is moving even in our diocese. So the idea of synodality, dialogue, moving together, is already what we are practicing. And we beg that the Spirit of the Lord will sustain us to continue. Vous avez parlé des, des enfants et des jeunes. De fait, c'est une caractéristique de votre pays, le plus peuplé d'Afrique, 212 millions d'habitants. On dit que vous serez 400 millions en 2050. C'est donc un pays avec une immense jeunesse. Euh, comment est-ce que ça, ça caractérise la vie de la société Oui, c'est shaping la société to the fact that we have some challenges. First of all, to carry along this teeming population to get them well formed in the faith and otherwise. In terms of educating them, sending these children to school, in terms of providing jobs for the teeming population of young people. So there are challenges, but also we see it as um, human capital for further developments of the country, Nigeria, and developments of the world, the society at large. And that's why in the part of the country where I come from in my state, and in the church, we work together to make sure that the human resources God have provide, has provided us are developed so that they will fit in anywhere in the world, beginning with our own locality. De fait, dans vos interventions pastorales, dans vos homélies, dans vos lettres, vous parlez beaucoup de l'éducation et de la famille. Ce sont pour vous les sujets principaux? Yes, beginning with the family. We call the family the domestic church. If we catch the children young from the families, I take myself for example, the prayers I know, the regular prayers of the church I know today as a cardinal, we are learned from my family at infancy. And with that, I started then as a mass server, coming closer to the altar of God, went to the higher school until today. So if the family is built, if parents join the ministers of the gospel to work hard to see that the faith takes root in the families, then it becomes easier. When the children go to school, the same faith will continue to grow until adulthood. So that's why we emphasize the family, education, then every other thing. Parmi les défis de votre pays, dont il faut rappeler que euh, la présence religieuse y est à peu près équilibrée avec 53% de musulmans, 46% de chrétiens. Mais pour autant, il y a des grandes différences entre le nord, où la charia est appliquée, et le sud, où il y a plus de, de chrétiens. Et globalement, des situations de tension aujourd'hui euh, avec beaucoup de, de violence. Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire de la situation First, the statistics may not be correct. Those of us in Nigeria are convinced that at most, the population of Christians and Muslims may be at 50-50. But we believe those of us from the South are convinced that we have majority of Christians in Nigeria. Why? Because most of those people in the North are also from the South. They migrate from the South to the North for businesses. They have dual domicile. They have houses in the south. They have houses in the north where they live and do their businesses. Then, during population, we do not have the equipment sometimes to take, get the correct statistics so people imagine whatever they think as regards the population. Then, question of violence. You know, there is violence in the world. We are the children of Adam. Any part of the world now, you cannot live here. See the security checks here. 
It's a question of insecurity. It's a question of emphasis where people want to uh, lay emphasis on. There is insecurity in Nigeria, no doubt about it. But those of us inside there know that Nigeria is not as unsafe as people think. So, but we are doing our best. The government is working at the lower level, but at the national level, well, we pray that things be made better by those in charge. As the citizens of the country, we talk. Sometimes it appears they don't listen. At the level of the bishops' conference of the country, I know a few years ago, we went on demonstration along the streets of Abuja, the capital of Nigeria, protesting the killings in the country by headsmen, by some other, well, unidentified persons. Why we did that was to draw the attention of the government to listen, to know, to beef up the security. But whether they listened or not, <laughs> we are yet to know. Hmm. Uh, de fait, l'actualité internationale souligne, hélas, régulièrement des attaques qui sont menées contre des chrétiens. Et si on prend les catholiques, des prêtres qui sont enlevés, certains assassinés. On se souvient aussi du tragique attentat de la Pentecôte dans une église qui a fait 50, 50 morts. Est-ce que vous diriez que cette violence terroriste aujourd'hui au Nigeria, elle est dirigée contre les chrétiens I do not have facts to say that it is specifically aimed at Christian people. But what I know is that Christians are being killed. Christians are being killed. At one point or the other, others are also killed. Sometimes those that perpetrate the violence do not bother who is there. If they want to attack a bus, they attack the bus. When they attack the train around Abuja, Kaduna, uh, there were Christians, there were Muslims. So, but in the South, that attacks on churches in the south give this impression that Christians are targeted. And we have many reasons to believe, yes, there are some people who target Christians in the south. But generally, violence does not know your sex, your religion, or whatever. C'est d'autant plus triste que ce pays a de nombreuses richesses. Il y a cet équilibre entre les communautés chrétiennes et musulmanes qui pourrait être favorable au dialogue. Et puis il y a des richesses naturelles, le pétrole par exemple. Pourquoi est-ce que cela ne marche pas This is what we wish that things go well. As religious leaders, we work hard. At the level of bishops' conference, we are united. People from the north, people from the south. But historically, if you know the country Nigeria, historically, People belong to different ethnic groups with their different governments, cultural backgrounds, educational background, before the amalgamation of 1914. And with the amalgamation and handing over power to some people, and sometimes to the disadvantage of others, this tension has continued to exist since the inception, since the birth of the country Nigeria. So that's what we are battling. If you listen to the news, or you people are news people, You hear of some ethnic groups, ethnic groups and militia ganging up or coming together to say, oh, we are no more part of the country. Yes, because when people see what is on ground and they feel that they are being marginalized or disadvantaged in one way or the other, they protest against the system. That's precisely what is happening in Nigeria. And we are making efforts as religious leaders and some other people of goodwill to see that this situation changes. Next year, Nigeria will be having a general election. Now people are moving around campaigning that we better look for people who will think of one Nigeria, who will help to develop their country, who will help to respect human dignity, irrespective of religion, tribe, or whatever. So we are working, and we believe God is on our side. Nous parlions de la jeunesse tout à l'heure qui est un immense espoir pour le pays, pour construire le futur du, du Nigeria. Comment faire pour que les jeunes ne cèdent pas aux sirènes de l'exil et du nord vers le mirage d'une vie meilleure And This is why we, like I mentioned, are catching them young, trying to shape them, trying to expose the realities on ground to them, trying to direct them to follow the right path. Because if they are properly directed and equipped, I think they will not follow the way of violence. Maintenant, comme cardinal, vous êtes un conseiller euh, du pape. Qu'est-ce que votre expérience du Nigeria peut apporter 
au Collège des Cardinaux, au Conseil du Pape Well, I have not been a cardinal before. <laughs> I was just a simple Christian, a simple Catholic, by the grace of God, a bishop in the diocese, and now nominated as a cardinal. I believe there may have been some qualities the Holy Spirit wants me to bring into the College of Cardinals. So I'm moving to join my brothers as cardinals. Well, living my life, making my local and poor contribution. However they assess it or however they accept it, is not my own uh, imagination, within my own imagination now. But I'm going to walk with others, pray with others. But in general, I'm going to be a cardinal as an African. I'm going there as a sharer in the Catholic faith. So until then, when things begin to unfold, if there is anything coming from me, we thank God for that. If there are things I'm yet to learn from many others to take home, I would thank God for that. Il y a aussi l'apport spécifique de l'Afrique. On parle souvent de ses difficultés et nous les avons évoquées, mais il y a aussi d'énormes richesses chez les catholiques d'Afrique dans l'engagement pour l'Église, dans l'enthousiasme pour la foi et peut-être des choses à prendre euh, comme exemple pour les autres Églises. You have really mentioned the vitality, the vibrancy, the joy of sharing the gospel, the family, the unity of the family structure. These are the values we have in our African, within our African background. That I, I think I will continue to share with my fellow cardinals and other bishops from different parts of the world. Peut-être pour terminer, Eminence, j'aimerais vous demander, ceux qui nous regardent sont dans différents pays, euh, s'ils veulent prier pour vous, pour votre diocèse et pour votre pays, que peuvent-ils demander au Seigneur? Let them beg the Lord to make our faith stronger as Catholics. Let them beg the Lord to give us the spirit to remain faithful in the, faith, in the face of all challenges. Let them help me to pray the Lord to give my people a better understanding of the common humanity, common brotherhood we share as believers and as children of God. With that, other things will come. Merci beaucoup, Eminence, de nous avoir Merci accordé beaucoup. cet entretien. Merci. Thank you so much. Gracias tante. Et merci beaucoup à vous de nous avoir suivis. Vous pouvez retrouver cet entretien et toutes les émissions liées au Consistoire sur notre site internet ktotv.com.